All right, guys. So um, so we are back from that interruption. So um, back to the question that we were just doing. Um, so I was asking Miss Clark to walk us through factorizing this expression. So she started. Miss Miss Clark, are you there? Ms. Clark, not getting any response. Ms. Waysom, are you there? What is happening this evening? Nobody wants to talk to me. Ms. Ms. Um, Ms. Fabio? Yes, sir. You want to walk us through this because nobody else seems to <laughs> be interested. Um, positive two times negative three. Uh, give me a second there. That's second levels. Okay, so. All right, so you said the factors would be what? This for six here would be? Two times negative three. All right, two times, two times negative three? Yes, sir. All right. If you multiply two times negative three, what would you get? Negative, um, positive six, sir. Sorry, I'm hearing you. Uh, yeah, man, I'm hearing um, Miss Clark. Yes, so what I'm saying is um, give me a second, Miss Clark. <laughs> We, I was calling on you, but um, it's the mic, sir. That's why I try to type it in the chat. Okay, but um, all right. So I started off with Miss Trivia, so I'm going to allow her to continue. Okay, no problem, Miss Trivia. No, yes, sir. Oh, all right, Miss Wilson. So apparently, everybody having mic issue this evening. Are you hearing me now, sir? I'm hearing you loud and clear, Miss Wilson. So, okay. Uh, I Okay. I guess there is a network problem. All right, Ms. Trevor is walking us through this question. So she gave me the two factors of two times negative three. So I was asking her now, if you multiply two times negative three, what the result would be. So Ms. Trevor, what would you actually get? Also, we're going to get a negative six. In negative six, but would that satisfy the last term here? No, sir. So it would be negative two and negative three. So it would be negative two and negative three. So now what we do now, we can just now replace the middle term, which is negative five. <coughs> Uh, negative 5x, rather, with negative 2x, negative 3x, plus 6. Plus 6. Uh, when we add, when we, when we factorize now, the common factor for the first pair would be what? x, sir. X. And so now if we divide X squared by X, we will get one. X, sir. X. And if we divide negative two X by X, we will get what? Minus two. Negative two. And if we divide now negative three X by X. All right. So. 
common factor before we move on. The common factor here would be what? Negative three. three. All right. So, so we would pull out negative three as the common factor. So negative three now into negative three x. Okay. Give that is x. Positive x. And negative three into positive six will give you one. Negative two. Negative two. So now we could finish up this factorization. Once the, bracket, the brackets have the same expression, we pull out the bracket as our HCF. And then now what remain outside, we simply put them in the other bracket. So we would have what? X minus three. Yeah. Now, what do you know this expression? When we are factorizing close to the one before. Um can you please mute your mic when you're not saying anything to me? All right, go ahead, Miss Travia. What what are not just Miss Travia, but everybody in general? What would you notice here about the factors of the last term in the previous expression when the middle term was a plus? And in this expression, now when the middle term is a minus, what you notice about the factors? First expression was positive and the second one becomes negative. What you notice about the factors in the first expression? What are the signs of the two factors in the first expression? That they were positive. What are the signs in this expression? One negative, one positive. No, look again, Miss Miss um, Williams. What are the two factors that we're referring to? Two numbers that- Oh, they're both negative. They are both two and negative. three. Right, they are both negative. Now, this is what I was trying to get you to see based on the thing that I was referring to in terms of the notes. So I'm going back to the notes now to show you now this is what we were talking about, all right? So I was saying to you that when the last term is positive, the two factors that you, you, you get from that last term can either be both two positives are two negatives. And we see the scenario in the first expression that we had two positives. Is that clear, students? And for the second scenario, we also saw where the two factors were what? Negative. Everybody see that? Let me see a hand if you were actually following and see exact and saw exactly what I was saying. All right. It seemed like I have missed, um, some persons would have missed that point because I only saw about three hands or so that went up. Uh, Miss Green? Miss Green, are you there? Miss Green, are you there? Yes, sir. Did you see exactly what was taking place in when I was factorizing those two expressions? Miss Green? Not for the three of them, sir. Yeah, but you see, it is important that you follow when I'm actually working on something because when you get distracted and you miss the idea, then it means that you're going to get confused when you're working the question. So in both scenarios, when I was factorizing, the first scenario that I factorized was x squared, x squared, x square 
प्लस फाइव एक्स प्लस सिक्स All right, so that was the first one. The second one was x square minus 5x Plus six. And these were the two expression that were factorized just now. The first one had factors positive two times positive three. All right. The second one has factors negative two So negative two times negative three. Everybody see that? Everybody seeing that? Let me see your hands if you're following what is happening here. Some of you seem to be sleeping. I don't know if everybody is actually paying attention. All right. So my question to you now, what you notice about the first expression is that you have a positive six. What you notice about the second expression, you also have a positive six. So this is saying when the last term is positive, the two factors that you're looking for, for the six, the three and the two, you can have two positives in this case, or you can have two negatives in this case. That's all this is saying, you know. Everybody see that? Let me see hands if you understand what, I, what I've said just now. So everybody is on track with me now. Because it, it seems as if I was losing everyone just now. All right, so that's it. that's it, the point I'm trying to make with this um these features that I'm I'm pointing out to you know. So when the last term is positive, once you look at the last term in any quadratic expression, it's a positive. The two factors you can either get, you can either get what? Two positive or what? Two negative. That's what this is saying. Now we're going to look now at the second part of the, 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 so we say that if, if B is positive, then both factors are positive. If B is negative, then both factors are negative. Now what these two, two, um, when we, we have a, when we have a statement starting with if, Anybody know what we refer to that statement as in English? Anybody know what part of speech if is? And the English people in here? It's a conjunction. No, it's not a conjunction. Anybody else? Okay. I guess I have to teach some English too, which is not normally, <laughs> normally not the case for a math teacher. All right, so when you start with if, this, the part of speech, we say that this is a supposition. So when you say if, you are saying suppose, suppose B is positive, then both the factors of C will be positive. If B is negative, then both the factors of C will be negative. 
Now, B here has to do with the coefficient of the middle term. So if B is positive, then the two factors going to be positive. If B is negative, then the two factors going to be negative. That's what this is saying. So let us just look back on the, this, the scenarios then. So we say that if the last term is positive, then either you have two positive or two negatives for the factors. Now, how do we know when we have two positives? Well, we look at the middle term. If the middle term is positive, then the both factor is going to be positive. However, if the middle term is negative, both factors are going to be negative. Let me see your hands if you understand what I've just explained. All right, so I'm only seeing two persons. Let me see the hands of those who don't quite understand what I'm saying. All right, Mr. Ojeno. So let me go back to the expressions now. All right. When we are factorizing this expression, what we are doing, we are looking for two factors of the last term. When we multiply them, we get the last term. When we add them, we get the coefficient of the middle term. So we are saying that if you have two expressions and you look at the last terms, all right, so in, in, the, in the first expression, you look at the last term, you see that it is positive. So what should come to your mind immediately? The factors that you're looking for, you can either have two positives or two negatives. You don't know, right? But you look at the last term. That's what the sign of the last term will indicate to you. Once the last term is a positive, it tells you that the two factors you're looking for, you're either looking for two positive or you're either looking for two negative. Do you get that? Let me see your hands. Right. Now, now, how do we know if it is too positive we're looking for? You look at the middle term. Now, when you look at the middle term, you're looking for the sign of the middle term. If the sign of the middle term is positive, it means that the two factors you're looking for would be two positive. If the sign of the middle term is negative, the two factors you're looking for has to be, they have to be two negative. That's all I'm saying with this. Is that clear to you all? Let me see your hands again. Because for some reason, this concept is giving you a little challenge to understand. All right. All right. So I, I'm getting the sense that you're understanding this now. So let me just go back to what this is saying. So when you're factorizing any quadratic, what you want to do, you look at the sign of the last term. If you have a positive um, last term, then you know that you're going to have to find two factors. So we're saying that when you have a positive last term, the two factors that you're looking for can either be two positive or two negatives. Now, how do we know what sign they are? We look at the middle term. So if we see that the middle term has a positive sign, we know that the two, two factors we're looking for in the last term has to be, they have to be two positives. But if we look at the middle term, I would see that the middle term has a negative sign. Then in this case, the two factors that we are looking for are going to be negative. All right? So that's just um, 
helping you to look at the question and analyze it based on the signs. So before you jump to just put in any two factors, look at the signs and know what they mean. Last term is positive, you're looking for either two positive factors or two negative factors. How do you know which one of them you're looking for? You look at the sign of the middle term. So if the sign of the middle term is positive, then the two factors you're looking for, they have to be positive. The sign of the middle term is negative, and the two factors you're looking for, they both have to be negative. All right, so that these are general rules when you're factorizing quadratic. All right, so we have another scenario here. So this scenario says now when, when the last term, when C is negative, now what it tells you about the two factors you're looking for now. Now in this case, one of them going to be positive and one of them going to be negative. So this scenario is different from the one that we just look at. The one that we just look at said that if the last term is positive, you're either going to look for two positive or two negative. But this one is saying now, when the last term is negative, the two factors you're looking for, one going to be positive and one going to be negative. All right. Here's the, the, the situation now. If the middle term is positive. The larger of the two, the larger of the two factors going to be positive. If the middle term is negative, the larger of the two going to be negative. All right, so what this is saying, if you have a situation for instance, you have, um, let's say you have x square plus, plus sorry, plus 5x. I guess this thing is not working out for me today. All right, so x squared plus 5x minus 6. Now, when you look at this scenario, what you notice here about the last term, what is the sign that we have here for the last term? Somebody. Negative. Negative, Negative right. Now, based on this, this, this scenario now, we are saying that when the last term, when C is negative, so in this case, the last term is negative. What it tells you when C is negative? The two factors that you're looking for are one going to be positive and one going to be negative. So one of the two factors of C will be negative and the other one will be positive. What are the two factors of six? If you are factorizing this, what two factors of six? And three. Huh? Positive six and negative one, sir. You would have positive six and negative one. So the two factors you would be looking for would be six times one. And we say now one of them has to be what? Positive and one has to be negative. So either the six going to be positive or the six going to be negative. So let us write the two situations. So either you have positive six and negative one, or we can have negative six and positive one. Now the question is,
I really need to be patient with this thing because it really upsetting me. All right, so is that you have negative six and positive one. Now, which of these two, when you add them, you get positive five? Positive six and one, sir. Positive negative one. Six and one. Now, if you add these down here, what would you get? Negative six plus one would give you what? Negative five. All right. So what this is saying, it says that if the middle term is positive, in this case, the middle term is positive, then it says that the larger of the two factors, what are the two factors here? Six and one. The larger one would be what? Six. So it is saying that the larger one is, is positive and the smaller one going to be negative, right? Now, the next case says that if B is negative, so in other words, suppose we didn't have a positive here, but instead a negative. Oops, sorry about that. So if we didn't have a positive here and instead we have a negative now, the question is now, which of these would, would actually, which of these two combination you would use to satisfy this middle term? Which, which two you'd add to get negative five? Which of the two fact which of the two pair that negative six and one, sir? Negative six and one. So that is what this is saying now. This is saying now if B is negative, that means the middle term here, the number in front of the middle term, that's the B that we are referring to. If the the five is the the, the, the term in the middle is negative then we're saying that the larger of the two factors is going to be negative. So these are the two factors. So we are saying that the larger one is going to be negative. So in, when you look at this one, this is a larger one. And so it is negative. And so what this is saying then, when you get questions to factorize, you need to do this little analysis in terms of looking at the sign of the last term and the sign of the middle term, because those will tell you something about the factors that you're looking for when you're factorizing. Now, let me see the hands of those who are following and understanding what this is saying to you. All right. All right. So let, let me let me just let me just put what we have just looked at in terms of these um these general 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 ideas. Let us put these to practice. All right, here we have the question that we were looking at from previous class. Now, can we apply what we just know to the questions? Now, I'm not going to ask you to factorize this, but what I'm going to ask you to do is to, to analyze what we're doing here, all right? So now, what do you notice about the last term here? Positive or negative? Positive. All right. So what does it tell you about the two factors that you're looking for? Um, that one of them is positive and one of them is negative. No, that's not what it tells you. Anybody else? Both positive. Both are positive or both are negative. 
All right, so it says that you can have either both positive or both negative. Everybody see that? Everybody seeing that? Yes, that, sir. Raise your hand if you if you are seeing what I'm saying, based on what we have just looked at. You can have both positive or both negative. That's what the last the sign of the last term is telling you. Once the last term is positive, you can have a, either both positive or both negative. How do you know what sign they should be now? What sign they should be? Should they be both positive or should they be both negative? For the first one, sir? Yes. Both negative. Why are they both negative, Miss Waysom? All right, sir. Um, the, the, the B, the coefficient of B is negative five, sir. Right. So if the, so the, the, so the sign of the, yes, sir. That would means determine the, 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 the sign factor. of the middle term tell you what the two of them going to be. Oh, yes, sir. Right. Now look at, look at number two now. What is the sign of the last term? Positive. All right. So what to tell you about the factors? Both it's are be positive. The, so both, both factors positive. can either be positive or negative. But in this case, sir, the coefficient is a positive, so it has to be positive. Right. So it means that the two factors you're looking for will be two positives. What about the next one down here? What the sign of the last term? Positive, sir. So the sign of the middle term going to be what? Two negative factors. All right. What about this one down here now? Would be the same, sir. Everybody... Two negative factors. What about the last one here now? When it is negative, it can be either a negative, a neg sir, it would be um for, for this for the coefficient, sir. The, the 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 larger number would be um negative and the smaller one would be a positive. Uh, so the factor would have been two and negative two and positive one. Before you jump to that though, just look once you look at the sign of the last term and it is negative. What is it saying about the two factors? One negative and one positive, sir. So one going to be negative, one going to be positive. Yes, sir. So you know that you're going to have one of them negative and one of them positive. The larger one going to be what? Negative, sir. Right, because the, the middle term going to give you the sign of the larger one. Look at this one now. What is the scenario here? So it's a negative, so you're going to have a negative. Negative and a positive, um, negative and positive factors. The larger one going to be what? Negative, sir, just the same. Look at question seven. What you going to have? Negative and a positive factor. In this case, the larger, the larger one would be a positive number. All right. Question eight. Look at the the the, the um sign here. Large negative, sir, and the negative. larger one. A positive just the same all right let me see the hands of those who understand how to do this analysis lower your hands for me guys let me see the hands of those who don't understand what is happening Let me see the hands of those who don't understand what is happening. All right, I'm going to take it that everybody understands because I'm not seeing any hand for those who are not understanding. All right, so, so now this analysis will work generally for case one, right? 
but it's it doesn't only work for case one it also work for case two but remember now case two will take a different approach when we are factorizing so that's what we want to move towards now so we would have looked at case one factorization technique now we want to go and look at case two factorization technique. All right, so for case two, when you have a quadratic expression where the coefficient, the coefficient in front, the x squared, is not equal to one. Now, when, they, when the number in front, the x squared, is not equal to one, that means that it has to be either greater than one or it has to be less than one. So it can be a number like two, three, four, five, positive two, positive three, positive four, five, et cetera. Or it could be a number less than one, such as negative two, negative three, negative four, and so on. So this is um, case two scenario. Now, when we have this condition, the approach that we're going to take to factorize this is the AC method. Now, AC method is not the only method to factorize this, but this is the one that I'm going to be looking at. All right. Now, the first step when you're factorizing this situation, when you have an expression in that satisfies this condition, we are going to find AC. Now, AC simply means you find the value of A and you use it to multiply by the value of C, right? So AC really means A times C. All right, so that's step one. Step one, you find AC. Now, down here would have pointed out that the process of finding the two factors now of AC. Because remember, now you find AC, and now you're going to find two factors of AC. When you add them, you get B, which is the middle term. So it, it's similar to what we have been doing in case one. Case one, what we 